I'm going to throw some uh, thoughts out there, at least uh, for my colleagues up here on the dais, um, you know, at least to give you a point of reference for at least the way that I feel about this. This certainly has been an extremely an, an emotional uh, matter. It's been emotional uh, not only for elected officials, but certainly it's been very emotional for our business community. It's been emotional for uh, some of Team Blonde's competitors. There, there has been, there has been, to amplify maybe uh, some of the comments by Commissioner Hosty, um, just a plethora of innuendo uh, that has that has covered, I think, everything possible from A to Z. You know, who knows who, who's tied in with the village, who's not tied in with the village, all these crazy type of ideas. Mike Storino threatened somebody, and I don't know if Mike Storino threatened anybody or, or not, because really, it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Of course, having some of that background may help people feel better about whether or not you feel proper in the way that you advance something before the village. But our job, in a matter of zoning, is not really to go back in history. This isn't a trial court. Nobody's on trial for doing something wrong. Um, you know, this is, uh, we're reacting to a petitioner's request to consider a text amendment to zoning. I met several months ago or less with uh, just about all of the competitors of Team Blonde, and so I'm not afraid to repeat myself tonight. I shared with them then, I'm gonna share it again tonight. Speaking for myself, I don't believe in the 500 foot distance limitation. I didn't believe in it when we adopted it, and I still don't believe in it today. But I am of the opinion that I choose, I individually choose which battles I like to fight. In that particular case, when, when that 500 foot rule came about, it was advanced by the business community, and since it was advanced by them, the majority of the council wanted to go along with it. I wasn't gonna just hold my hand up there being the, being the oddball out just for the sake of being the oddball out. I believe good government is about good compromise. And occasionally you have to compromise. I have a hard time, I have a real hard time for, for myself when I'm going to cast a vote that's going to protect certain types of businesses. I, for myself, I, I think that's un-American. I, I don't think that we should be protecting businesses. And, and I wish I wish I could have a crystal ball to go back in time to find out exactly you know when Team Blonde moved from Circle of Madison to where they're at now. At what point did they start uh, maybe trying to do some things that they shouldn't have been doing? And I've never asked them. I've never called them. I've never went in their store to try to put them on the spot to try and own up whether or not they've done something that they shouldn't have been doing. I think the facts are when when our village government, through our staff, that means our building department, our fire department, our police department, when they identify something that is not in concert <coughs> with our law, their job is to take action. And I believe that we took action. It's my understanding that when it became full knowledge of our village government, our village government went into Team Blonde and said, you know what, you must stop what you're doing. You have to stop. You can't do that. You don't, you don't, you don't meet the zoning to do that. That's when all the drama begins. When we, at the point that we become aware of it, we go in and stop them, then all the drama begins. All the innuendo starts flying. Our job as a local government isn't isn't to go in there and say stop and we're going to send you to the penitentiary. Our job is to go in there and say stop. Now if, 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 that, if that use can be brought into compliance, fine. If that use cannot be brought into compliance, then you simply have to remain not performing that use. What we have in front of us here tonight is the due process. The due process that's afforded every single property owner in Forest Park. And we've had tens and tens and tens 
it probably numbers in the hundreds, but we've had many, many opportunities for property owners to go through the vetting process, going before the zoning board, seeking to get some kind of variation to our zoning code. And, and in fact, all, all the members up here, you've, you've voted on some in the past. I mean, this is a due process. To send a petitioner to the zoning board, let it get vetted out there, comes as a recommendation to us, and then we have to decide what we feel is in the best interest. There is definitely multiple sides to this story. The, you know, the, the competition's lined up here in the front. The petitioner's lined up a few rows back. This is a very, very touchy situation. And uh, I don't know that there's any easy way out. I don't know that everyone's always going to be happy based upon whatever decision this council makes up here. But I wanted to publicly share the thought, as I had shared with the folks that I met with, I myself, I don't believe in that 500 foot limitation. Um, because it, for me personally, you know, that, that doesn't let the free market dictate. And there's been plenty of opportunities in Forest Park where we've had ample, uh, we've had ample antique stores uh, close to one another, some cases next door to each other. And, and there's been other instances like that. Generally, the the free market cleanses that system. Um, so I, I'm hoping that there might be some other thoughts here that maybe you want to share or um, or do we just want to move on? We want to entertain a uh, an amendment uh, to this ordinance that's proposed to us. What's your pleasure? 